Do you have song lyrics that you wrote that could be set to music? Please send them to me. Kelly and Mitchell did, and their song, Lads in the Shire, is on my new CD, Sell Couth. We will tell you how it happened and if it'll work for you. It's Pub Songs and Stories, number 256. Welcome to Pub Songs and Stories. This is the virtual public house for musicians to share the stories and inspiration behind their music with your host, Mark Gunn. Subscribe to the podcast at pubsong.com. Welcome to Pub Stories. Hey, if you want to know more about the songs I play, this is the audio liner notes for you to get to know more about my songs and how they might relate to your life. But first, Pub Songs and Stories is a podcast brought to you by my Gunrunners on Patreon. The public version of this show is released on the first Monday of each month, and that's starting in August. That's all being reformatted right now. And there will, however, be a private version. It will come out about two weeks after the public one, exclusively on Patreon. So not all the audio liner notes will be uh, publicly available. So if you're looking for stories from other Celtic bands, like we had uh, in episodes last year, you know, I was doing the Celtic stories. Well, I'm doing it now, but it's exclusively on the Irish and Celtic music podcast. As a patron of mine, you'll get this podcast and be able to download songs featured in this show. Get sheet music and access to Coffee with the Celt Father concerts. You get a lot for just a little, just as little as $5 per month, and you can also save 15% with an annual membership. Thanks to my newest gun runners on Patreon, Ivan McCallop, Don Rice, Antonia Pickard, Deborah Cottrell, Dee Dee Magnin, Nancy Douglas DeBaca, and Wayne Finnegar. All right, what is new? There's a lot going on that's new, um, but I'm I'm going to share a little bit right now. (laughs) Mostly, I want to talk about my new Kickstarter, which is going to go live in August. The album is called Come Adventure With Me. It features that title track. If if you've been to any of my shows, you've seen me perform it. I love the song. It also has the song Blink, and I hope to have some other fantastic songs on there as well. It's some of my newest music, and several songs were released as singles. Uh, Favor of a Dance, I'm going to put on there. And if I haven't given them away on Patreon yet, then they will be. And why is that? Well, let me tell you. (laughs) Streaming music gives you a quick and easy way to sample all of my music. Digital sales keep my business running. Tips and CD sales allow me to tour. Patreon funds my songwriting. And Kickstarter funds physical products like CDs, shirts, pins, and other merch. The plan is to officially release the album next year, but the big question is, in what format? I still have quite a few people who ask me to keep releasing CDs, and I also started releasing album pins, which are lapel pins that are associated with each album. Um, So you can basically wear your albums on your sleeve. And that is what this Kickstarter will fund. Yes, some of the music will go to pay musicians for their time in helping create the music, but most of it goes into producing physical merch for this album. Although I'm also raising money for album pins for a couple of my past albums. I want to try to get uh, several of my more popular albums as available as album pins. If you're interested in supporting this album, please subscribe to my newsletter and follow my link to the kickstarter page in august i'll announce all upcoming shows a lot of shows coming up uh gen con i'll be at the first week of august for august 4th through 7th august 19th iron shield brewing august 20th best end brewing august 26th three taverns brewery i'll be at uh, dragon con september 1st through 5th middle tennessee highland game and celtic festival september 10th through 11th and then september 28th through october 2nd is alep in shaker town kentucky uh, like Hobbit music will enjoy this, <laughs> which is very appropriate because a while back, uh, Mitchell Peterson emailed me some lyrics. Mitchell is not only the sound engineer for my podcast, but he and his wife are also fans of my uh, Firefly drinking songs and Hobbit drinking song shows at Dragon Con. They come every year with a group and it's, it's, they're amazing people. And of course, he's also a fan of the Irish and Celtic music podcast, which is where they found the song that I felt. And I will let them start by telling you more about the song Lads in the Shire. Hey, this is Mitch Peterson. And Kelly Peterson. And today we wanted to talk about a geeky parody we wrote. Uh, The original song we heard on the Irish and Celtic Music Podcast, episode 455, was a song performed by Wolf Losher called Lads Among Heather. Now the geeky parody we wrote is Lads in the Shire. And um, we took a lot of parallels in terms of the form and stuff. And then on top of that, uh, Mark wrote his own melody on top of it. But um, it just seemed like a song that was really easy to write. It kind of wrote itself. We were listening to episode 455 of the podcast while working on our cosplay costumes for Dragon Con. And when Lads Among Heather came on the podcast, we both looked up at each other 
And it was like, we both knew this sounds just like it could be turned into lads in the Shire. And while we were working on our costumes, we started thinking up the lyrics and wrote a few of them down. And then over the next maybe week, work to really come up with the rest of the lyrics um, to fit into this Lord of the Rings Middle Earth theme. Yeah, yeah. That was really cool how we just kind of like, I mean, we had like the original lyrics and then we kind of did a side by side with like, well, how could this stuff about Scotland also be about the Shire? And just like some of the parallels that we made right away, and the first one especially, was um, for a dance in the barn is worth 10 in the hole. And we immediately thought oh well dance by the tree is worth 10 in the hall because like the the party party, tree yeah the party tree right exactly (laughs) with the lads that were reared in the shire it just felt so natural to change those two lines that the rest just built off of that yeah and like another good example is like you know the the original song talks about a city take a walk through in your cities broad buildings outside gaze on the splendors and the wonder that made us think of... Gondor, Minas Tirith, like... Yeah, the splendor of the white city and the white tree. Yeah, and then the other one uh, Another, you, you saw was um, was about the queen, right? There's a line that says, When the queen wants some soldiers, she kens where to send. And that made me think of Gandalf and how Gandalf always goes to the Shire and gets a hobbit whenever he needs a little bit of help with the yeah. quest. <laughs> it's like, oh, the world's falling apart. Better go get a hobbit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh... And then the next line is, to the mountains and valleys, hills and the glens. And we had to throw in Pippin's line. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the the meter just fit too well with Pippin. It was just, it's just going to be a nice nod on a mission quest thing there and back again. Yeah. So it's actually like a double reference where it's like Pippin's on a mission quest thing, but then also like there and back, back again, again, like the original hobbit and it just turned out to be really cool and we we kind of saw a lot you know a similar vibe between like what this original song was trying to say like well the scotsmen you know they're they're the greatest they may not be humble and they may not have the big cities but like the lads among the heather that's that's the that's the stuff as it were (laughs) and uh, we thought the hobbits would share you know that attitude that sentiment and would you know if if somebody stopped by the shire you know these outsiders then we they would tell them well you might have your big cities and all but you can't beat the weed that's growing on the south farthing (laughs) yeah so here we were with this um song and it turned out to be pretty good um we thought it was, I mean, we, we really enjoyed it, but uh, we were like, well, what's next? And we thought to ourselves, who do we know who likes to perform geeky parodies of Irish and Celtic music? And it was strange. It was like we suddenly had this thought of who it could be. Oh, weird. And so we said, hey, Mark, um, <laughs> we have written this entire parody, and we're wondering if you wanted to check it out. Uh, if not, cool, whatever, it's fine. But um here's the document and uh, he looked at it and um he said he liked it and everything and then like lo and behold he sent me some audio files of it and um man it was it was everything i hoped it would be uh we initially thought of mark as being a perfect fit because like i mean he 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 writes some lord of the rings parodies and and he goes to alep and stuff Mm -hmm. and um it just seemed right up his alley it reminded us a little bit once we finished it of um his middle earth bragging song that he plays with the broad denagian bards and um it just seemed yeah it, it, it was perfect and we love how he plays it he plays the melody different from how we first heard the song and different from the recordings you can find online but it really fits the song and it fits Mark's style of playing and singing and we just love how it turned out. You know, additionally, with Mark singing especially, like this just felt like a Dragon Con moment. You know, we talked about the filk track and um how there's a lot of geeky parodies there, you know, people write their own lyrics to all kinds of stuff. There's some originals as well. But um it's a really strong community and this just felt like a song that that community would enjoy singing um while having a good time and uh Because of that, like, I I wanted to capture that vibe in the recording as well. So Mark had sent me all the recordings, and, you know, everything sounded good. And then um, he had the idea of, like, singing a couple other parts. Like, he wanted to sing with an elf voice and a dwarf voice. 
um, and his regular voice like you know so you have the other races kind of playing background to uh, the lead part which is about the Shire and all that so um, we had those tracks down and I thought it would be cool to like make the song progressively sound more and more like a party and so um, I took some of those tracks and just like copy pasted them and then um, I actually tuned them to uh, like a different harmony part, like the third and the fifth of a scale. Um, and progressively, I just built up more and more voices, which is actually all just Mark, but it still sounds cool. Like it's a bunch of different people. <laughs> and uh, by the end of it, it's definitely like a raucous, like everyone's singing, and the lads that were reared in the Shire, or something like that. And um, it just turned out really good. And I hope that other fellow Lord of the Rings and Filk enthusiasts uh, we'll enjoy it as much as we did and that, you know, sometime at Dragon Con or some other convention or any kind of gathering where this might be heard, that uh, everybody can really belt out that chorus part. Well, we got to see it at Dragon Con 2021. It was awesome. It was performed by the Brobdingnagian Bards as part of their Hobbit drinking song set. And I wonder if it was the first time they performed it. It didn't seem like it. It went really well, but everybody loved it. It was really fun to see it live in person. It was very cool. So to answer the question about whether Andrew and I had played the song much before our Hobbit drinking song show, the answer is a big resounding no. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny getting song lyrics from people. What makes me choose one song or another? And it really varies. First off, I don't do nearly as many parodies as I used to. I enjoy parodies. However, one of my goals from the start was to write song lyrics and melodies. It's rare that I follow up the songs sent to me that are parodies, especially if I don't know the original song. Sometimes I will write my own melody. Mitchell and I have gotten to know one another over the years. So I thought it would be at least worth trying his song. Now, some songs are really tough. They just don't click. And I have some lyrics from Reshared and Rose that I haven't set to music, maybe yet, but maybe ever, But because they just didn't click uh, for whatever reason. But of course, I also have a whole bunch that did. See the Don't Go Drinking with Hobbits CD, which is mostly lyrics written by Ree. And maybe it's the hobbity nature about this song, but I love the lyrics. They were different from my standard Hobbit lyrics, especially the ones that I write. It felt like a good change to try, so I picked up the auto harp and started strumming. And I said some songs are really tough to write melodies for, and this one was not. The auto harp and melody came together with minimal effort. I also decided to record it. Initially, I thought I would just have Mitchell mix it and release it on Patreon as a one-off freebie, which is something I, I do now and then if I get some songs. But after getting additional instrumentation added and hearing the mix, I decided to consider it for the CD. <laughs> now, I should point out, I had about 20 tracks I was considering for my latest album, Selkuth. And why did this one make the cut instead of being delayed until the next album? And it really came down to length. My, my goal was to keep the album at under 44 minutes. That's 22 minutes per side. After organizing all the songs, this two and a half minute song fit perfectly on the a side of the album <laughs> i know it's it's kind of silly <laughs> that's not to say it wouldn't have made the cut but i i still love it and as as mitchell pointed out it is the latest addition to my hobbit drinking songs show that i do the delightfully simple instruments of bass and mandolin were provided by daniel briggs and of course and mitchell peterson mixed and mastered the song so first i want to send a big Thank you to Mitchell and Kelly for writing this song and sending it to me. You can download Lads in the Shire as an MP3 when you join my Gunrunners Club on Patreon, or of course, you can get it on Selkuth. In fact, I want to invite you to go buy my album if you haven't already, because that really does help me keep making music. So thank you for that. This is Lads in the Shire. Come young hobbit maidens, where'er you have been To the hills you call home and the green dragon inn In all Middle Earth, you'll ne'er find a friend Like the lads that were reared in the Shire Your dwarf beasts away in caverns so tall Your parties with men hope your great elven balls For a dance beneath the tree is worth ten in the hall With the lads that were reared in the Shire Take a walk round your cities, its walls reach the sky Gaze on the white tree and tower with pride But the best pipe weed's grown on the farthing south side By the lads that were reared in the Shire Your dwarf beasts away in caverns so tall Your parties with men folk, your great elven balls Or dancing the tree is worth ten in hall With the lads that were reared in the Shire When Gandalf 
Lovely bearers of burglared sin On a mission questing They're back again even unto the black gates They're true to the end Of the lads that were reared in the Shire Your dwarf be so way and cavern so tall Your parties with men folk Your great building falls Before dance beneath the tree Is worth it in the hall With the lads that were reared in the Shire Rivendell boasts of their songs and their prose And Fangorn can boast for the trees that ants grow But give me the land where the brandy wine flows And the green rolling hills of the Shire Your dwarf be so way and cavern so tall Your parties with men folk, your great elven balls Or dance beneath the tree, your thin in the hall With, with the lads that were reared in the Shire your dwarf be so way in caverns so tall Your parties with men folk Your great elven balls For dancing the tree Is worth ten in the hall With the lads that were reared in the Shire I hope you enjoyed the song. And of course, if you have a song that you think might work for me, send me an email. You can send it to sing at pubsong.net. When you send that email, you will also get a bonus for auto responder that has uh, some freebies for you to check out. And you can also subscribe to Pub Songs and Stories through that email. But then I can check out your song and see what I think. Um, again, I, time wise, I don't have a lot of time usually to mess with these songs, but I do occasionally pick them up. And if they resonate at the time, then it might turn into something. If they don't, it might turn into something later or it might not. I don't know. Um, I just got a message today from someone on Patreon who says, uh, I set your song Spinner's Real. I wrote some lyrics for that, that, that tune. And I was like, that's fantastic. But I haven't had a chance to actually mess with it. In, since he first told me about it, which was a, a year or so ago. And, um, you know, it happens. So uh, feel free to check back in every now and then, but definitely drop me a line and make sure you check out the email because you'll get 10 Celtic songs you'll love to sing. It's a songbook um, when you send that email to sing at pubsong.net. All right, thank you so much for listening to Pub Songs and Stories. The show is produced by Mark Gunn, edited by Mitchell Peterson with graphics by Miranda Nelson Designs. You can subscribe and listen wherever you find podcasts. You can also subscribe to my mailing list. You will get regular updates of new music, podcast special offers, and you'll get an album for free. Welcome to the pub at pubsong.com.